subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. A very welcome to all of you. It's Senior High School R on the Joy Learning Television channel. And I'm so thrilled to be here with you for another lesson in physics for SHS1. And then probably Albert is my name. As usual, you can call me Pius, and then we are good to go. We are going to look at a very interesting topic under light and wave phenomenon. And for the start, as beginners in Form 1, we are going to look at reflection of light from plain and curved surfaces. Reflection of light from plain and curved surfaces. So as we go through the lesson, you get to understand what we mean by reflection of light, what the plain surface is, what the curved surface is, and then we'll go on with the analysis. All right, so let's look at our lesson objectives. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. The first one is that. You should be able to briefly explain the concept of reflection of light rays. So how do you explain to a friend what we mean by the light rays have been reflected? Then you should be able to distinguish between rays and beams and the types of beams. Rays and beams and the types of beams. So what is a ray, what is a beam, and their types. Then we should be able to also use the formula we are going to encounter to calculate for the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection, as well as the angle of deviation. So we come across what you call angle of incidence, angle of reflection, angle of deviation. So should be able to use the formula that I'm going to encounter to calculate these angle of incidence, angle of reflection, and then angle of deviation. Then lastly, you should also be able to define some terminologies such as luminous bodies, transparent bodies, opaque bodies, and give at least an example of each of these bodies. So get yourselves glued to your sets and then let's see what we can do for our lesson. For our introduction, we'll look at what light is. Of course, nobody's going to ask you to define light. Maybe you may be asked to tell something about light, but for the start, we can say that light is an electromagnetic wave, which I'm going to explain to you shortly. And we'll say that this particular wave, which we are calling electromagnetic wave, falls within the visible region. That means that light stimulates vision, visible region of what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. That is something small you can say about light. It is an electromagnetic wave, and then it falls within the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So when I say light is an electromagnetic wave, what do I mean? I mean that light can travel through both vacuum and a material medium. Light can travel through both vacuum and a material medium. That's what I mean by light is an electromagnetic wave. Then, when you talk about electromagnetic spectrum, what do we mean? Electromagnetic spectrum, what do we mean by that? We have a group of waves you call electromagnetic waves. A number of them called electromagnetic waves. And when we arrange them, in a particular order, whether in 
decreasing wavelength or increasing wavelength, when we do that, then they form what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. So light is an electromagnetic wave and it falls within the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So when we arrange those examples of electromagnetic waves, when we arrange them, there is a portion where we have visible light and then light falls there. So that is something that we can say about light. All right, so we can move on with the lesson. That is for our introduction. So at least you know that, if you don't know anything at all, light can travel through both vacuum and a material medium. And we say it is an electromagnetic wave. It can go through both vacuum and a material medium. So sometimes we could ask you, why is it that when there is a thunder and there is lightning, you mostly will see the lightning first before you hear the thunder. Why? Light can go through vacuum, so it can travel fast or faster than the sound. The sound will need a material medium to travel through, so it will take a little bit of time before it can get to your hearing. Then we are saying light is also a form of energy. So then I would ask you, why is light also a form of energy? Light is also a form of energy. Why is it also a form of energy? Okay. So you could try and discuss with your friends, why is light a form of energy? At a junior high school, we were taught something about photosynthesis, a process or a means by which green plants prepare their own food. Then we are told that they use energy from the sunlight to do that food as part of what they are supposed to do. So it is one evidence that light is a form of energy. What other evidence can we have to show that light is a form of energy? Well, that will be your assignment for another day. Find out probably from the internet, find out from your friends, discuss amongst one another or each other, why is light a form of energy. Okay, so then we are good to go. We want to look at some properties of light. What are the things that we can say about light or light rays? One, I'm saying light travels in a straight path or light travels in a straight line. This is what we call the rectilinear propagation of light. The rectilinear propagation of light. Light travels in a straight path. It is one of the reasons why we cannot really see around corners. Why? Because light travels in a straight line. So the, line cannot, the, the light cannot just go and bend around the corner. You see, it has to go straight in this path. So if there is a corner, it's going to cast a shadow around the corner. So it's one of the reasons why we are unable to see around corners. It is because light travels in a straight path. What else can we say about light? You can also say that light travels with a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. That's what it end there. You have to say in vacuum or air. Why am I saying so? It is because the speed of light varies from one medium into the other. That means that light has different speeds in different media. So you cannot just say that light travels with a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. You should be able to specify the medium involved. And here, the medium is vacuum or air. So you have to keep that in mind. The light travels with a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second in vacuum. Okay, what else can we say about light? We can say that when light is incident on a substance or on a surface, one, it can undergo reflection. That is interesting. So light can be reflected or light can be refracted. Can I go refraction? Or the light can be absorbed. Can I go absorption? 
So we are looking at reflection of light rays. So what do we mean by that? The light is incident on the surface and then it bounces. It hits the surface and comes back. We say the light has been reflected. And most of the time, that surface must be a rigid one or a hard surface or a polished one. So the light cannot enter, cannot go through it. So it bounces. Then we say the light has been reflected. Now the light could also be refracted, which would be a lesson that you have to go through when you get to form two. The light can undergo refraction. What do you mean by that? It means the light ray is moving from one medium into another of different optical densities. Then the light ray bends at the boundary between the two media. When it does that, we say the light ray has been refracted. It has changed direction as it moves from one medium into the other. Then the light ray can also be absorbed. That means the light would incident on a soft surface and the surface absorbs the light ray. When that happens, we say light has undergone absorption. Absorption. Good. Then we can also say light can travel through both vacuum and a material medium. Light can travel through both vacuum and a material medium. That is the reason why we are saying light is an electromagnetic wave. So if there is just a vacuum, an empty space, light will go through it. If there is a solid or a liquid or a gas medium too, the light will travel through it. So light is not limited by the medium of travel. If it is a vacuum, it will go through it. If it is also a solid or a liquid or a gas medium, it will go through it. So I think that light can travel through both vacuum and a material medium. Good. So that's what we mean by it is an electromagnetic wave. Good. Now we can also say that light is a transverse wave. Light is a transverse wave. What are transverse waves? Transverse waves are waves that cause the particles of their traveling medium to be displaced perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. What do I mean? If this is my light ray, and the light ray is going through a medium, then That is it. So that's, that could be the direction of the light ray in the medium. This light ray, as it goes through the medium, what does it do? It causes the particles of the medium to be displaced, to be displaced perpendicular. So if this color, if this stands for the particles of the medium, they will be displaced in this direction. They will be displaced perpendicular, up and down, up and down, like that. So the red color or the red pen is giving us the direction of travel of the wave. So let's say a light waves. Then the blue is showing us the vibration of the particles of the traveling medium. And the vibrations are perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. So we say light is a transverse wave. It causes the particles of its traveling medium. It causes the particles of the medium through which it travels to be moved, to be displaced perpendicular to its direction of travel. So these are some of the properties or characteristics of light. And I expect you to be able to also find out more properties, more characteristics of light waves or light rays for yourselves. And I'll be glad you will be able to make quite much progress in that area. So we move on with rays and beams. In our lesson objectives, we made mention that you should be able to tell at the end of the lesson what a ray is and what a beam is. So what is a ray? A ray is the path taken by light. So when we look at the path taken by life, light and 
we trace the path we use we say it's a ray so i could just draw this way this is just a line but if i put an arrow on it it becomes a ray so this is a ray the path taken by a light of course the ray might not just only move from our left to right it could also move from our right to left so i could just draw this and put an arrow on it that's also a ray so you can't have the ray without an arrow on it it could also move from top to down this way with my arrow that's a ray we have another one that way so all these are rays they are showing you the path taken by light so the path taken by light is what we call a ray now a beam is a collection or group of light rays so when you have two or more light rays put together you form a beam so we could have could have a number of them maybe this one let me get an arrow let's get another one let's get an arrow then we get another one maybe the third one will do and let me get an arrow these are a collection a group of light rays and i'm saying that they are called a beam you could get another that maybe the arrow this way you get another one that the arrow this way get another one that the arrow this way so these are also a collection of light rays then we are saying they form a beam so a light ray is the path taken by light then a collection of light rays a group of them gives us a beam that is good with us good we can move on types of beams we can have about three different types of beams at your level let's look at the first type parallel beam so the first type is what we call the parallel beam and i'm saying it is a group of light rays of course it's a beam so a collection of light rays now they travel in the same direction that's one they move in the same direction and number two they do not meet they travel in the same direction and they do not meet that makes them parallel beam so we can look at an illustration of parallel beam so we can have a collection of light rays you can have this one let's get an arrow let's get another one The arrows are very important, so take note. Then you get another one. These light rays do not meet at any point. They travel in the same direction. So we say they are what we call parallel beam. I could have this. This one is here. Then you could have this. Then I could have this. A collection of light rays. 
moving in the same direction and they do not meet, they form what they call a parallel beam. Okay, now let's move on to the next type of beam, convergent beam. To converge means to come to meet at a point. So here, we are looking at a collection of light rays that come to meet at a common point. So we say convergent beam, convergent beam, a collection of light rays that meet at a point, a group of light rays that meet at a point. So the group here stands for the beam, and then they meet at one point, so they converge. So we call them a convergent beam. Let's see if you can get an illustration for that. So you could have, you could have that, then that, then you could have that one too. Of course, they are just lines, but if I put in the arrow, and I put in another arrow, and I put in another arrow, it tells you that the, the light rays are going to meet at a particular point. So because they are a group of light rays, and they go to meet at a particular point, we say they are converging. So a convergent beam, a convergent beam. Then we look at another, the last type. If we have a convergent beam, then we are likely to also have a divergent beam. So the next one is divergent beam. To diverge is to move away from a common point. So if you have a group of light rays that are at a common point, but they move away from the common point, then we say, define what they call a divergent beam. So a group of light rays, the group makes them a beam, but they move away from a common point. So they move away from a common point, therefore we say they form what they call a divergent beam. We try and get an illustration. We we'll have this, then, we have this one, then we have that. Now they are just lines, but if I put in the arrows to show that they are moving away from a common point, then we say they form what you call a divergent beam. So a group of light rays that come away from a common point, we say they form a divergent beam. I hope you are really following the lesson because as you go ahead, you'll be asked to draw ray diagrams. So a ray diagram should have a number of light rays in there. You don't draw a ray diagram without arrows on the lines. And on that, you're going to score zero. So take note of that. We can move on. Sources of light. Sources of light. You're talking about light here. Where do you get light from? We can classify or group the sources of light under two main headings. One, the natural sources of light. So we have what we call natural sources of light. Then you can also look at artificial sources of light. So light could come from a natural source or light could come from an artificial source. Let's look at the first one. When we say artificial, sorry, natural sources of light, what do we mean? We mean these sources of light are not made by man. No human being created those light sources. They are found in nature. They are found in nature. So it wasn't made by man, it is found in nature. Can we try and get some examples? One or two of natural sources of light. I'm seeing the sun. So there's no human being on the surface of the earth who can say he made the sun. <laughs> no. 
or the moon. You can't tell me that you made the moon or someone made the moon. No, it's found in nature. A firefly. Probably you might not have seen one before. I would have to show you one. So, these are natural sources of light. No man made them. They are found in nature. So, we can look at these. For the sake of those who are yet to see some of these. And that would be strange if I had to see the sun. So, I have the sun here. You can see the blue sky. And then the sun is shining in there. Very beautiful. So, that is the sun. You could also look at the moon. So, you have these buildings here at night. And the moon has beautifully appeared in the sky. So, that is the moon also there. Then, this is a very fascinating insect. That is a firefly. At night, the... the have this kind of glowing light at their tail end and it's so beautiful and that's a firefly and it's, when you see them and a group of them they brighten up they lighten up where they are at night so that is it that's a firefly and they are all natural sources of light let's quickly look at the artificial sources of light So when you say artificial sources of light, then we have come to these light sources that were made by man. So these sources of light are made by man. So for artificial sources of light, they are light sources that are made by man. Men tried to copy what they found in nature so they found ways and means to also get light sources from devices so that they could use them. And we say they are artificial sources of light. They are made by man. They are made by man. So can we get some examples of artificial sources of light? Yes, we can. And I'm sure you have numerous of them that you can share with your friends. Okay, so let's look at that. Examples include, one, candle. I'm sure most of you have seen a candle before. So candle, electric bulb, torchlight, all these are made by man. And they are able to give us light. So we say they are artificial sources of light. We can look at a candle. That's a candle. A very beautiful one. Glowing like that. Giving us light. Then we can look at electric bulbs. So these days we have LEDs, light emitting diodes. We used to have these tungsten filament bulbs that could give us so much heat, although they give us the light that we need. Now, because of technology, we have bulbs that don't even produce heat. But electric bulbs were made by man. Okay, then we can look at a touch light, and that's a touch light. And these days we really have rechargeable touch lights. So you don't just have to stick to one that has, has to use just batteries, and then when the batteries get uh, used up, you throw them away and buy new ones. No, this time you can just get one that you can recharge when the battery runs down. So these are artificial sources of light. And I implore you to try and find out other examples of both artificial and natural sources of light. Now, there are some basic technologies that we use as far as light is concerned. And you need to get to know these technologies and you have to keep the definitions in your head and be able to give at least two examples. Two examples. I'm going to run you through a number of technologies and I expect you to be able to get examples outside those that I'm going to give to you. So, the first one I'm going to look at is what you call transparent bodies. When we say a body is transparent, what do we mean by that? Well, I'm saying that these bodies, one, they can be seen through. They can be seen through. Why? 
it is for a reason. They allow most of the light incident on them to pass through them. They allow most of the light incident on them to pass through them. They allow most of the light incident on them to pass through them. That is the reason for which they can be seen through. So transparent bodies are bodies that can be seen through because they allow most of the light incident on them to pass through them. Then we can try our best and look at some examples of transparent bodies. Can we get some examples? Okay. Well, I'm saying that we can get one, a glass. And I would want to even say plain glass. <laughs> because sometimes we have some kind of type of glasses that are not seen through. But we have others too that can be seen through. Even the glass of the, the, the windscreen of a vehicle, it can be seen through. Although these days some people try to do what they call tinted. They try to tint the glasses so that people or light rays might not really pierce through them. But normally for a plain glass, it should be transparent. It should be seen through. Like the normal glass that used to take water at home, it's a plain glass, it's not really colored, it's just white in nature. It should be seen through. Then we can also look at another example, clear water. So here I'm, I'm, I am very uh, emphatic on clear because sometimes the water could be dirty or muddy. It will not be seen through. But if it's clear water, it can be seen through. Then we say it's a transparent material. We can also look at the next technology. If we have transparent bodies. We also have what we call translucent bodies. Translucent bodies. So what are translucent bodies? I am saying that these bodies cannot be seen through clearly. I am not saying they cannot be seen through. I am saying that they can't be seen through clearly. So you could see through a translucent body to some extent. And I'll show you a picture very soon. Why is this so? It is because these bodies, they don't allow, they do not allow most of the light incident on them to pass through them. They do not allow most of the light that is incident on them to pass through them. So, you have the light incident on them, well, but they allow just a little amount of that light to pass through them. Therefore, whatever you see through is not that clear. Now, let me say that before you could have a view at something, at an object or at somebody, light rays must move from that thing, that object or that body into the eyes of the viewer. So, an example, there is somebody in a dark room. There's another person standing under light or in a lighted place. The one in a dark room will see the one who is standing where there is light. But the one who is standing where there is light will not see the one in the dark room. Why? The one under the light will have light rays traveling from his or her body into the eyes of the one in the dark room. So the one in the dark room will see him or her clearly. But the one who is not in the dark room, who is in the light, cannot view the one in the dark room because light rays are not traveling from the person in the dark into his or her eyes. So he or she will not see the person. So in the same way, because the light rays that travel from the object or through the object to your eyes are not that much, you won't also see much of the object or the body. And that's what transducent bodies do. Other texts will tell you that for these bodies, they allow light to pass through them in an irregular manner. So, with irregular reflection, you are going to see blurry images. And that is the problem. So, for these bodies, they cannot be seen through clearly because they do not allow most of the light incident on them to pass through them. And that is it. So, we can look at an example or two of translucent bodies. And the first one I have 
is frosted glass. Frosted glass. If you want to see a very clear example of frosted glass, just at home, get a glass and put it in the freezer for like 10 to 15 minutes. When you take it out, you put maybe one finger at one side of the glass and try to view from the other side of the glass. And you see that your finger will not be seen clearly. You will see that there's a finger there, but it will be quite bled. That is frosted glass. That is frosted glass. Then we can look at the next example, which could be oiled paper. So paper that has been oiled or we poured oil on it. If you pass light through it, you wouldn't really see clearly through it. And these are translucent bodies. They are all translucent bodies. So we can have some pictures. So look at the glass I'm talking about here. That's this whole rectangular glass you can see here is frosted glass. But the glass down here is plain. So you could see that somebody is passing behind the glass. Down here, because it's a plain glass and it is transparent, you can see the legs of the person. And so clear. But look at the other side. From like the knee level upwards, you can't see the person clearly because those portions are frosted glass. You have the person behind frosted glass. You cannot see that person clearly. Then we can look at oiled paper. Look at the diagram here. This whole rectangular sheet you can see there is paper. It's paper. It's paper. Then you have this smaller portion here. It's light, probably a bulb that has been lit. So it's on and it's behind the paper. But because the paper is oiled, you cannot see the light rays through it clearly. And that's what I'm talking about. And that is oiled paper. And it's a translucent body. So we looked at transparent bodies, we looked at translucent bodies. Then another interesting one is the next one I'm going to look at. Whereas we are saying that for transparent bodies, they can be seen through because they allow most of the light to pass through them. We have translucent bodies. They are translucent because they cannot be seen through clearly because they just have or they allow just a little amount of light to pass through them. These third ones, these ones, opaque bodies, they cannot be seen through at all. So these are bodies that cannot be seen through at all. Why? Because they do not allow light to pass through them. So these are bodies that do not allow, they do not, they do not, they do not allow, do not allow light. To pass through them. Hence, they cannot be seen through. Hence, they cannot be seen through. So they do not allow light to pass through them. Hence, they cannot be seen through. So we call them opaque bodies. Can you think of some examples? Anybody at all? That even if you stand behind that thing, you will not be seen. Why? Light will not pass through it. So we say it is an opaque body. It is an opaque body. You can look at examples. Maybe one or two of them. One is wood. Wood is an opaque body. It's not allowed light to pass through it. Therefore, it cannot be seen through. You can look at another one, which is stones. Stones. Stones are opaque bodies. When you arrange them or you have a huge stone, you go and stand behind it, you will not be seen because it will not allow light to pass through it. Good. We can move on with our other technologies that we call luminous bodies. So, when you are asked to give examples of, let's say, bodies that produce light, especially the natural ones, when normally you give students an example like the moon, then they tend to be looking at you in a very funny way. Then they are like, ah, how, how? You see, the moon 
will not produce its own light or doesn't produce its own light. But then, it will be able to reflect light that is falling on it from another body. Okay. So, we have what we call luminous bodies and then non-luminous bodies. So, we look at the two in the Jiffy. But the first one, luminous bodies. For these ones, they produce their own light. They produce their own light. So luminous bodies are bodies that produce their own light. They give off their own light. Good. Can we get an example? Yes, we can. So we can look at the sun and then the stars. The sun, the stars, they produce their own light. So we call them luminous bodies. The opposite, their other counterpart is non-luminous bodies. Non-luminous bodies. Why are they non-luminous? They do not produce. Do not produce their own light. They don't give off their own light. What do they do? They are seen because of the light they reflect. So light from other sources fall on them. Then they in turn reflect that light. Then they can be seen. Good. So for non-luminous bodies, they do not produce their own light. They give off light that falls on them from other sources. So a clear example would be the moon. Good. So we can look at examples of luminous or non-luminous bodies. And we have, there you have the moon and then human beings. So you see, you can see a human being. When light falls on a human being, the light is reflected, and then you see the person. So the human being doesn't produce his own light. No, not at all. But when light falls on the human being, it reflects. Then you can see the human being. So these become non-luminous bodies. Non-luminous bodies. Then we have what we call incandescent bodies. Incandescent bodies. These bodies give off light when they have been heated sufficiently. So ordinarily, these bodies will not give off any light. But when they are heated sufficiently, then they will give off light. We call such bodies incandescent bodies. Then we can look at examples of incandescent bodies. That will include glowing charcoal. Glowing charcoal. So you have glowing charcoal. Charcoal is being bent. As it glows, it gives off light. And that is an example of an incandescent body. Then we have wood fire. Going on those days, but sometimes these days too, people use what's called firewood. They gather some wood together and then they light it up. And as it flames up, as it burns, you would find it producing or giving off light. So wood fire is an example of an incandescent body. And they are, mind you, they are very hot. As they give off the light, they are heated. So you don't go closer to them. Okay. Then we can look at the next term, illumination. When we say illumination, what do we mean? We refer to light falling on a body. So when light is falling on a body, we say the body is being illuminated. In other words, an illuminated body is body, a body that has been seen, or a body that is being seen because it is reflecting the light that is falling on it. That is falling on it. So a body that receives light is said to be illuminated. So if there's darkness and you take a torchlight and you throw it onto a body, that body that you have thrown the torchlight onto or the light onto, we say that body is being illuminated. Good. That body is being illuminated. And you can see that body because of the light thrown on it. So, 
a body that is said to be illuminated is one that is seen because it reflects light incident on it. So you could be asked, what is an illuminated body? So it is a body that is seen because it reflects light incident on it. And that's very important. It could be in your objective first questions. Now, the term illumination. When we say illumination, what do we mean? We refer to light coming out from a body. So the body is just there and it's giving off light. We say then there is illumination. For example, to say that the sun illuminates means the sun gives off light. So the sun illuminates simply means the sun gives off light. And so we use the term illumination to refer to light coming out from a body. We've gone through quite a number of technologies and I think that you should be able to pick at least three, four of these technologies and their definitions and also get about two, three examples of each of them. Transparent bodies, translucent bodies, opaque bodies, right? Luminous bodies, non-luminous bodies. So get the definitions of about at least three of them. Then get examples. That will help you as you learn reflection of light from plain and curved surfaces. So now we want to look at the actual thing that we are supposed to be looking at, reflection of light by plain surfaces. Now, when we say a plain surface, what we mean is a flat surface. So a plain surface is a flat surface, like a sheet of paper it has got a flat surface. So when we say a plain mirror, what we actually mean is a mirror with a flat surface. If you run your finger or rub your thumb along the surface of that mirror, it's flat. It's not curved. You say it's a plain mirror. So that's what we're trying to say, that we're going to look at light being reflected from such flat surfaces. Now, we want to consider a diagram. We want to consider a diagram. So let's say I want to just put a diagram in perspective. This is a flat surface. That should be my plain mirror. So this is a plain mirror surface. The, the place I have shaded is the back of the mirror. Okay. Now, the other surface, which is unshaded, is the front side of the mirror, where you can see a reflection of yourself. Now, we want to look at, there is an imaginary line. It's an imaginary line that divides the surface of the mirror into two equal halves, okay? A line that divides the surface of the mirror into two equal halves. This line we call the normal, the normal. It's normal to the surface. It divides the surface into two equal halves. Then we can have a line that is incident on the mirror surface, like that. And I have to show that it is incident on it. So it's no more just a line, it's now a ray. And this one is called the incidence ray. The incident ray. Now when the ray is incident, the mirror surface reflects it reflects it. Therefore, you have another ray which we call the reflected ray.
reflected ray. Good. So we have the incidence ray, the normal, and the reflected ray. These are meeting points of light rays lines. So meeting points of lines will give you what we call an angle. Now the angle between the incidence ray and the normal, I will use I to represent it, and I is called the angle of incidence. So this I here is angle of incidence. Now the angle between the normal and the reflected ray, I will use R for that, and R is called angle of reflection. So I is angle of incidence, R is angle of reflection. Then you can see that the incidence ray here makes an angle with the mirror surface. And this ray here, reflected ray, also makes an angle with the mirror surface. These angles, I'll use J and J to represent them. J is glancing angle. Glancing angle. So we have I giving you angle of incidence. And then I have R giving me angle of reflection. Then I have J giving me glancing angle. Now, let me use this diagram to do just one thing. Assuming the incidence ray, assuming, we are just assuming, could pass through, could pass through the mirror surface. It's just an assumption. If it could pass through the mirror surface, then it could come maybe through like this. From, so this is the incidence ray, and we are assuming if it could pass through the surface, then it will not just end here, it will follow suit or follow through like that, which is not the case. But if it could do so, let me try to change the color. Then it could be like I'm showing on your screen. So let's say it could pass through this way. So you follow the green line. Now, you see there's an angle between where the ray reflected through and this dotted green line. So the ray, if it had its own way and to go through the mirror surface, it would have followed the green line, go through like that, like that, like that. But it rather went through here, it got reflected. The angle between this ray here, reflected ray, and where the incident ray could have passed if it went through the mirror is D. And that D is called angle of deviation. Angle of deviation. So, for our first lesson on reflection of light from plane and curved surfaces, we're going to wrap up here. We are able to begin with light. We found out light will be an electromagnetic wave, also a transverse wave. We looked at some of its properties like having a speed of 3.0 times the power 8 meters per second in vacuum. Went ahead to look at some technologies like transparent, translucent, opaque, luminous, and luminous bodies. Then we ended up by looking at how a mirror would reflect light rays, and we look at the angle of incidence, angle of reflection, the glancing angle, and the angle of deviation. In our next lesson, we'll make time and go through the laws of reflection, and then go ahead and solve some other questions using the formula we're going to get out of this diagram. It's been nice having you on this lesson or for this lesson 
and then probably Albert is my name, you can call me Pius. I hope to come your way another time with another interesting lesson in physics. So then, keep doing all you're supposed to do for your success and be consistent. Have a good time. Bye bye for now. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.